guys, my name is Gigi and today's story will be one of the most bizarre in the history of aviation. British Airways Flight 5390 was a flight from Birmingham Airport to Malaga International Airport in Spain. June 10, 1990, it was Fine day, blue skies, and the Bach 111 series 528FL jetliner shortly take off. Carried 81 passengers, 4 cabin crew, pilot Captain Timothy Lancaster, who had lagged 11,050 flight hours on the Bach 111. First officer, a 39 year old Alastair Atchison, with the pilot and the crew were familiar with each other by so many flights they've been together. Joining them this time is first officer Alastair Atchison. Before the takeoff, Alastair completed his routine check of the aircraft, then reported to the pilot. He did a routine takeoff at 8.20 and then handed control to Captain Lancaster. Most of the passengers were waiting to a relaxing trip to Malaga, Spain. This would be a two-hour trip. After the routine introduction to the passengers, like, Good morning, ladies and gents. This is your Captain Timothy Lancaster. We're heading to Malaga, Spain. Relax, enjoy the ride. It's a beautiful day. Blue skies out there. So after the initial introduction, both both Captain Lancaster and First Officer Atchison released their shoulder harness, and Lancaster loosened his lap belt. You know the seat belt. At eight thirty-three, the plane had climbed to 17,300 feet and the cabin crew getting ready for the meal. Air steward Nigel Ogden was entering the cockpit serving Lancaster a tea and Alistair milk with sugar when there was a loud bang and the cabin quickly filled with condensation. The left wing screen panel of Lancaster's side of the flight deck had separated from the forward fuselage. Lancaster was propelled out of his seat by the rushing air from the decompression and forced head first out of the flight deck. His knees were caught on the flight controls and his upper torso remained outside the aircraft, exposed to extreme wind and cold. The autopilot had disengaged, causing the plane to descend rapidly. Ogden, the flight crew, rushed to grab his belt and his leg. He was holding him to make sure to still keep him. The plane was not equipped with oxygen for everyone on board, so Atchison, the first officer, began a rapid emergency descent to reach an altitude with sufficient air pressure. He then re-engaged the autopilot and broadcast a distress call. Ogden, still holding into Lancaster at this point, is developing frostbite and exhaustion, so chips toward John Howard and airs toward Simon Rogers took over the task of holding on to the captain. By this time, Lancaster had, had shifted several inches uh, farther outside and his head was repeatedly striking the side of the fuselage. The crew believed him to be dead, but Atchison told the others to continue holding on to him out of the fear that letting go of him might cause to strike the left-wing engine or horizontal 
potentially damaging it. Eventually, Atchison was able to hear the clearance from air traffic control to make an emergency landing at the Southampton Airport. At 8.55 local time, the aircraft landed at Southampton and the passengers using the board steps. Emergency unit assisted the passengers and the crew and the crew with the passengers relief thanking the crew, the co-pilot, Alistair Atchison for his heroism and determination. Alistair Atchison and the crew walking with tears in their eyes shaking heads while walking. Ogden dislocated his shoulder and had and had frostbite on his face with damage to one eye. They saw Captain Lancaster being examined by the medical team. But Captain Lancaster survived with frostbite, bruising, shock, and fractures to his right arm, left thumb, and right wrist. Final report, the investigation. Investigators found that when the windscreen was installed 27 hours before the flight, 84 of the bolts used were 0 0.026 inches, too small in diameter. Standards 8 to 11 minus A 8C versus A to 11 minus 8D, which are number 8. 32 versus 10 dash 32 by the unified thread standard and the remaining six were a to 11 dash 7d which is the correct diameter but 0 0.1 inch too short the previous windscreen had also been fitted using incorrect bolts which were replaced by the ship maintenance manager on a like-for-like -like basis without reference to maintenance documentation as the plane was due, due to depart shortly. The undersized bolts were unable to withstand the air pressure difference between the cabin and the outside atmosphere during flight. Investigators found that the ship maintenance manager responsible for the installing the incorrect bolts had failed to follow British Airways policies. They recommended that the CAA recognize the need for aircraft engineering personnel to wear corrective glasses if prescribed. They also faulted the policies themselves which should have required testing or verification by another individual for the critical test. Finally, they found the local Birmingham airport management responsible for not directly monitoring the ship maintenance managers working practices. The crew recovered after a few months, continued the career until they retired. First Officer Alistair Stewart Atchison and cabin crew members Suzanne Gibbons and Nigel Ogden were awarded the Queen's, Queen's Commendation for Valuable Service in the Air. Og Ogden's name was erroneously missed from the published supplement. Atchison was awarded a 1992 Polaris Award for his ability and heroism you guys i know we we love to travel it's a nice story uh, everybody survive i chose this story because it's close to my heart i love flying my major was travel and tourism and i used to work in an airline company which was flying was a privilege we will always enjoy the flight and all the time please buckle up Wherever you are, whoever you are, it's a short trip. Take it a good one. I thank you all guys for watching. Please like and subscribe. Have a great week ahead. Enjoy. Love you all.